Hi everyone, my name is Gang Zhao Lu. I'm from Harbin Institute of Technology. I'm very glad to present our cluster 2020 short paper titled Optimizing GPU Memory Transactions for Convolution Operations. First, let me briefly introduce the operation of a simple 2D convolution. As can be seen from the figure, As can be seen from the figure, we have a 3x3 input and a 2x2 kernel. We slide the kernel over the input to perform an element-wise multiplication with the part of input where the kernel is currently located. And then we sum the result to generate one output element. As we slide the kernel along y's dimension, a row of output elements will be generated. As we slide the kernel along height dimension, a column of output elements will be generated. For now, there are three main optimizations on convolution, including general matrix multiplication, fast Fourier transformation, and Wengerite algorithm. However, all three methods need to transform input and kernel into matrices before performing real computation. We take a DMM-based convolution as an illustration example. Each sub-block of input is transformed into a row of input matrix. The entire kernel is transformed into a column of, of kernel matrix, and then the standard matrix multiplication is performed to generate the output matrix. Finally, the output matrix is transformed into the output. However, this process pipeline can incur many memory transactions during the transformation phase and many duplicate elements in the input matrix, like duplicate ones and uh, duplicate folds. In this work, we try to optimize memory performance of convolution by reducing memory transactions. We closely examine the process of convolution and find that there are two opportunities to reduce the memory transactions of convolution. First, when convolving along wise dimension, there are overlapped columns between different sub-blocks of input. We can see in the left figure that uh, two columns are overlapped between different uh, sub-blocks. So we select the kernel along high dimension as shown in the right figure. Two rows are overlapped. Based on both observations, we design two reuse techniques named column reuse and uh, row reuse. For illustration, we assume that uh, each thread calculates one column of uh, output elements and the kernel size is uh, 5 by 5. In step 1, each thread loads the first uh, element. For example, thread 0 loads element 0 thread 1 loads element 1, and thread 6 loads element 6. In step 2, each thread loads its second element. For example, thread 0 loads element 1, and thread 1 loads element 2, thread 6 loads element 7. We can say that in step 2, elements 1, 2, 3 has been loaded in step 1 by thread 1 to 3 and in step 3 and step 4 there are also overlapped elements with step 1 only in step 5 there is no overlapped elements with, with step 1 therefore we let each thread lose the first element in step 1 and the fifth element 
in step two. And the loaded elements are stored in the thread private array item. After step one and step two, item zero of each thread stores the first input element. And item four of each thread stores the fifth input element. In step three, each thread needs to get its third element. Then we let thread two and thread three provide item zero to thread zero and thread one. Let thread zero and thread one provide item four to thread two and thread three. This process can be implemented in one shuffle instruction, like this. For thread 2 and thread 3, i equals to 0. For thread 0 and thread 1, i equals to 4. However, there is a huge performance degradation because of the dynamic indexing of item array. In the shuffle instruction, i is dependent on the thread ID, which can only be decided when the program is running. Thus, the compiler will put the item array in the local memory which possesses the same access latency as global memory. To convert the dynamic indexing of item into static indexing, we design a converting method. First, we pack item 0 and item 4 into one 64-bit variable named exchange, and then each thread calculates the shift amount to place the right element into the lower 32 the lower 32 bits of the variable exchange. Then unpack it, then unpack exchange to item 2 and uh, item 1. Now, item 1 is the element that each thread needs to provide. Thus, we can rewrite the shuffle instruction like this. We can say that the dynamic indexing has been changed from i to 1. After converting the dynamic indexing into static indexing, the compiler can put an item array in registers and eliminate the negative effect of dynamic indexing. Now we introduce our row reuse technique. Assume that thread 0 needs to compute one column of output. The calculation process can be described like this. From this formula, we can say that uh, row i1 and uh, row i3 are loaded twice. Row i2 is loaded three times. To e eliminate uh, this uh, duplication, we redesign the calculation process. The idea is that uh, when a thread loads one row from global memory, it uses the row to calculate as many output elements as it can. When thread 0 loads row i0, it uses row i0 to calculate out 0. Then loads row i1 and uses it to calculate out 0 and out 1. Load the row i2 and uh, use it to calculate uh, out 0, out 1, and out 2. Thus, we can eliminate the duplicate rows. We conduct our experiments. We conduct our experiments on an NVIDIA GPU card. We use CUDA 2 kit wherein 10.2. CUDN 
verifier wherein 3.6.4 media performance primitives and uh, GMM image to column. The tested applications are uh, 2D convolution and uh, multi channel 2D convolution. First, we present uh, the results on 2D convolution. The tested image size ranges from 256 to 4K. Figures report the speed ups of QDN, Refire, MPP, and our approach or image to column. We can say that uh, our approach exhibits superior performance over other implementations as the image size increases. In this experiment, we compare our approach against the multi channel 2D convolution implementations in QDN and use image to column as the baseline. Since our work focuses on optimizing memory transactions of convolutions, but not operations on input channels, we apply our approach to convolutions with one and three input channels. The configurations of convolution are shown in the table. We set the input channel to 1 and 3. In the figure below, these are the algorithms provided in QDN, and this column is the speedups of our method. Experiments show that our implementation achieves an average speedup of 19.5 and uh, 25.6 or uh, image to column for one uh, three input channels. This translates to an improvement of 1.3 and 1.1 over the fastest algorithm including for one and three input channels respectively. Now we come to the conclusion. Our approach improves the data locality for convolutional operations and reduces the memory transactions. Experimental results show that our approach consistently outperforms the competing methods by delivering the best overall performance for the convolution tasks. That's all. Thanks for your listening.